Did you know that one of the most advanced diesel engines in aviation history came not from modern tech, but from 1930s Germany? It wasn't jet-powered, and it wasn't built for speed. But what it lacked in glamour, it made up for in sheer mechanical genius. Meet the Junkers Jumo 205, a six-cylinder, opposed piston, two-stroke diesel aircraft engine that redefined endurance and efficiency in the air. And yes, it actually flew. At a time when aviation was dominated by radial gas engines that guzzled fuel like it was going out of style, the Jumo 205 brought something radical. Low fuel consumption, smooth power delivery, and long-distance capability. With a displacement of 16.6 liters and a power output of around 700 horsepower, this engine could outperform many of its gasoline counterparts in range and efficiency. That's not just clever. It was revolutionary. Now hold on. A diesel engine in an airplane? That's not a joke. While most of us associate diesel with trucks and ships, the Jumo 205 was specifically engineered for flight. And it wasn't just some prototype collecting dust in a hangar. It powered real aircraft like the Junkers U-86 bomber and the Blohm and Voss Ha 139 transatlantic mail plane. This engine flew across oceans, literally. Let's talk design, because here's where things get wild. The Jumo 205 used an opposed piston setup, meaning each cylinder had two pistons compressing the air-fuel mixture from opposite ends. No cylinder heads, no valves, just two crankshafts, one on top, one on the bottom, working in perfect harmony. It was smooth, efficient, and incredibly compact for its output. And here's the kicker. It ran on heavy fuel oil, making it much safer and more stable than aviation gasoline during long missions. Now imagine you're in the 1930s and you're designing a plane that needs to stay airborne for 10 hours over the ocean. Would you want a thirsty radial engine that overheats at high altitudes or a low RPM diesel that just keeps going? The Luftwaffe and even civilian airlines knew the answer. That's why the Jumo 205 wasn't just an experiment, it was a workhorse. But here's the cliffhanger. If it was that good, why did it vanish? Before we get to that twist, let's pause for a second. Have you ever seen a modern aircraft diesel engine with two crankshafts? No? That's because this level of mechanical complexity wasn't exactly maintenance friendly. As reliable as the Jumo 205 was in flight, it required trained hands to keep it running. And in wartime, simplicity wins. Jet engines were coming, and suddenly, the future looked like turbines, not pistons. And yet decades later, engineers still study this engine. Why? Because the Jumo 205 proved that diesel and aviation could work together, efficiently. It laid the groundwork for today's aviation diesels like the Thielert Centurion and Continental CD300. These modern engines echo the same ideas. Better fuel economy, cleaner combustion, and safer operation. So here's the twist. The Jumo 205 may not fly anymore, but it still turns heads. You'll find it in museums, in engineering textbooks, and even on 3D modeling forms where enthusiasts try to bring it back to life. It's not just an engine, it's an icon of mechanical ambition. And maybe, just maybe, it's a reminder that innovation doesn't always roar. Sometimes it hums at low RPM, burns diesel, and flies over the Atlantic without anyone realizing just how far ahead it really was. Stick around. In the next video, we're diving into a diesel engine so powerful, it needed two turbos just to breathe.